Easy people, nice things here, back again, hopefully you're having a great start to your new year. I've been moving and now finally somewhere where I hopefully I can start doing more of these. Um, for anybody new here, I basically just do tips and trips and observations, tips and trips, tips and tricks and observations that I've learned about this machine because I think it's an ace machine. I'll tell you how ace I think it was. I got rid of most of my music gear and I solely use this thing here. Uh, I, I have this thing here, which is, yeah, I'll, I'm not even talking about that. And I have this thing here, which I quite enjoy. Um, but that's for another time. And what I wanted to do today is talk about envelopes. So I'm going to kind of just give you a quick overview of an envelope and how it works for Aka Force and fundamentally how an envelope works. So hopefully this will be helpful. I'm going to go knobs and I'm going to make a tune one handed in quick swing, make it house ish because it just saves a lot of bother. Dancey tunes always. They're easy to do on this thing and they're, they're quick. So here we go. I'll record that. Oh, press that to put on record. Two, three, and. I think that'll do. Is there anything else? Yeah, might as well be nice it'll be. Okay, quick one for this envelope. I'm just gonna cut this envelope so it doesn't. That's, that's better, so it's got less clipping in it. There's a couple of ways I could have done that. Okay, what else? While I'm here, yeah, get rid of some of that room. That's what I prefer. Anything else while I'm here? Yeah, let's get some of the video to move on that crap too. Yeah, okay. So that's the sound of something. Right. Now, I want to groove this up. I'll, do, I'll use that. Okay. So I've got that sound. And I'm going to go to the envelopes. Two caveats to this to keep in mind. Whatever you do with an envelope in the drum program, and that's where we are, and that's why I'm showing it um, on the Akai Force, is anything you do to an envelope, the only way to reset it is to manually to put it back to what it was before you started messing with it, or to delete the sample, or copy the sample over with another sample which has not been touched, or another pad. That's number one. Uh, Number two is on the envelope pitch. They seem to be, arbit well, they're not arbitrary numbers. They're just weird ass numbers. And what would be nice is if it could tell you on the pitch what semitones you were on or anything like that. I don't know. For anybody who's musically or synthy interested in that lot, those are caveats. For everybody else, don't worry about it. You're not going to lose sloop over it. Use your ears. That's what it is. It's music. We, we use our ears. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make this sound a little bit more interesting. So here I am in envelopes and I'm on the pitch envelope. 
And what the pitch envelope is, is just the same as any envelope. In its most basic form here on the force, it's attack and decay. So A stands for attack, D stands for decay. And the moment there's about six on that, whatever six stands for, it goes up to 127. Um, my guess is at the time of MIDI starting, it was like 127 kind of registers that you could do. Obviously now we're in like the 32-bit era or whatever era we are in now. You could have two, was it 2048? I don't know. The resolution is a lot higher than it was then. But anyway, we stuck at 127 and that's how it worked. This thing up here has got some weird, uh, weird numbers. So I don't know what the numbers are. Like I said, it would be nicer if it was brackets. So it told you semitones. And it'd be nicer if it was a reset button. Or even better, it would be ace, is if you could switch the envelopes on and off. That would be ace. And even more so, if that could be automated, that would be even better. But that isn't where it is. So what I'm going to do is, this sound here, I want to make it move up. I want to try and see if I can keep this all in some kind of scale sensibility. So I'm going to move it from C minor to um, in, in the C minor scale, I don't know, uh, E minor, right? So it's going to go C minor to E minor. So the way I, I would do it on here is press that. Da, 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 da. Remember, it's da, 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 da because there's no other way you're going to be able to do it because you, like I said you can't see it here then I go to pitch and then I go duh remember it's duh now um, if I use shift I can kind of tighten it up if it's sharp or flat or anything like that but we're just making life easy so what that is now is is there and what that's saying is it's at the depth of 394. So it's going to go from where it was not to, well, where it is, is not the original sound. But what we've done is we've moved that pitch envelope up to 394. At the moment, it's got a not attack. So the effect is immediate, immediate. The decay of that effect is immediate as well. So at the end of it, it's immediate. And what we're going to say is we're going to, we want the original thing back, what was C minor. So, and then we want it to go up to 394. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this thing here, the attack. So now, now that was mad quick because again, the length of the sound, but we probably missed it. I should have used a better sound, but I'm just going to keep this flat. I'm going to just see how, how much we can move it. There we go. So it's moved up. But it's really, really quick. It's really, really quick. So I'm going to use this little curve thing here because that'll just make it come up into that quicker. So you can hear it there. You should be able to hear it. It's just the length of the sound. I wish I could show you off. Well, here's here's the sound with it. Now, here's the sound what it originally was. Free Nightfall, remember that? Free Nightfall. Uh, because I, I did use that shift right so that's what it originally is but what I've done is I've gone up so I'm just going to go 397 so I've put a little groove on that just to do just to make that clearer because that sound is really mad short I'm going to do it on this one so 56 397 I'll remember that so here we go so we'll go up down 56 with we're keeping the decay as what it was. We'll go 56, pitch 56. We'll probably need to change that, but we, we don't need to change the, the key because we know what the key is, 397. So now, what we have is we have that sound going from C minor to E minor. So we could say, all right, Maybe want that to do that longer. That's probably better. There we 
There we go. So what that's doing is it's going from there where it originally was and then it's going to go up to 397 and it stays there because again the decay we haven't changed what we could do and you'll start to see a picture formulating is we can move this decay now so what it's going to do is it's going to stay there for a, a a time of whatever who knows because we're only using a and d at the moment and then come back down obviously because of the, the length of that sound and I'm um, guessing that sound's got an echo on and an effect on it. Yeah, it has. So the real sound is. There we go. So you can hear it. It's trying to attempt to go back to the original. And what we could do is we could do it a bit more. And here is like a curve. If you want to get into it, you can press that and you can see these are the curve shapes. So this is the attack shape of the curve of how it goes in and the decay and you can you can arc and it's it's an arc concave or convex right so so it's going to try to return back to d c sharp so if we go a bit further with the decay you should go and what's cool about that is now if you press no and we go into keys We got some kind of old school kind of um, what were they called? Eight oh eight state, I think that group were called. I think they did some along that line. They didn't do it like this, um, but it's got that kind of maybe even now. As opposed to what we originally had, which was. So it's a way of, of maybe making sounds a le little less boring or, or, or more to the point, actually making a flat sound, sound change key. Now, the same thing is true with the other types of envelope. So the envelope, for amp, it's just me quite a louder, but the fill envelope's quite a cool one. At the moment, what we have is we have the cutoff, and this one is at 20, but there's no depth to it. It's not it's not being affected at all. If I turn in the depth of that, you'll notice it's starting to fade. So it's gonna go like that and disappear. But what we can say is, yeah, but we don't want that to happen straight away. We want that to happen over time. So we want it to originally. Again, attack. So you can hear it's doing it, but it's taking, it's doing it right immediately. Because again, it's the length of that time it's doing it. So it's curving into that. But we probably want it convex or concave. I can never remember which one it is. And again, we can do the same thing. We could say, yeah, we want it to come out. So we only want it to do it for a certain amount. And then come back in. And we can do that as well, con con concave. So that it's got more. That's interesting. So, the only difference now is if we flip to this, we can make it a little bit more sophisticated, attack the hold, how long it's going to hold for, and then how when it's going to decay. So what we can say now is we can say it's going to do this, but we only want it to hold for, I don't know, 25% of that sample's affected distance of the envelope. That's the only way I can explain it. It's, it is a bit convoluted. And I wish I could explain it in another way, but. And then we, what we're saying is it's going to sustain. At the moment, it's sustaining all the way to the end, but we only want it to sustain a short amount. And this is how you can do this interesting simp sounds. So it's going to do that and then it's going to decay back. We can make that. 
closer in the middle. Really. And now we could just say, well, let's try it with a different type of envelope. Um, filter, filter. And what's ace about the Akai Force and the Akai in themselves is they've got loads. There's loads. There's one here which, which can make stuff into a cappellas, kind of, by using filter, EQ. And you've got all ones. So, I've just funked that up. Bring down the depth if I don't want it as much. Or vice versa. Or, bring the cut bar higher. So it's not doing it as much. It's not going as deep. So now I've just got a nice sound. Sadly, I wish I could switch it off and on for you to hear the difference. The, the only way I could do that, um, if for you to hear the difference, is by doing that. Going to load and loading. And uh, I hope it was scar. It was scar. So this is that's the original sound, but we've modified it. And now. So let's see, so now we've just modified this, let's see what we'll get a tune on. Uh, I ain't got, <laughs> no, no, no tunes coming to mind. Could do the same thing with a bass, edit, bass, let me see if there's anything what comes to mind with a bass, I'll, I'll, I'll mess with the pitch a little. Um, there, and I don't know, it'll dip somewhere. I better do it to 397 as well. Try and keep them all in key. Let's try some, we'll try some, we're making it up as we go along. Let's see. Okay. And then we can even mess with that that way. That's interesting. And we can, and because we use the same kit, we can copy that across and see how that would sound with a normal. So this, this is what we've tweaked with that bass. And this is what it would normally be. That's what it would be normally. So that's quite dull. So that's the original kit if we were to use it without our tweaks as opposed to this. That's quite funky that. I don't know. Something. Obviously this has gone on longer than I wanted to. Hopefully you've been able to see how we can use pitch envelope or more to the point, how we can use envelopes to modify sounds. Now, I could go into a lot more room depth things, but this has took 20 minutes and uh, hopefully has been useful for you. All right then, so hopefully catch you soon. And until then, as always, peace.